of their job that they're doing. And that is why I believe they're very much in the business of making sure gold prices are lower than the market would be, just like they kept gold at $35 an ounce for a long, long time, and then they had to throw in the towel and gold uh, sur surges up. So I think that uh, uh, is the same thing that's going on today. But uh, literally, it's going to go to thousands of dollars. Uh, Dr. Paul, is Congress finally going to be able to do an audit on our gold reserves in Fort Knox? If so, what time frame? Could they? Okay, he's asking about the uh, audit of the gold reserves, which I mentioned on a program on, on Kitco, I believe, a program uh, recently, and uh, the bill will be introduced. I've introduced this bill in the past, and I've talked about it in the past. But um, during the Gold Commission in 1983, uh, no, in 1981, I brought up the subject to recommend that we have a gold audit, and uh, 15 uh, of the 17 voted against the audit. But we haven't really had a, a serious audit I, probably for more than 60 years. Uh, the bill is going to have difficulty passing. I hope I'm as successful with getting co-sponsors mm -hmm. on this uh, as I was with audit the Fed bill. But there should be no reason in the world that a single person in this country or a single member of Congress wouldn't say, you know, transparency of government is good. We ought to know if the gold is there. Who knows? We might need it someday. <laughs> we might have to, uh, you know, have a gold standard to do something with it. So we ought to know if it's really there. We do know that Western banks have sold a lot of gold and they've loaned a lot of gold. So even if we walk in and they show me and they say, there it is, all that gold, what are you worrying about? I won't know what kind of uh, agreement they've had, what kind of swap arrangements they have. So you really have to be able to internally audit a lot of what the Fed does and what the Treasury does to find out exactly who owns that gold. But I think this is a very important point, but I don't think it's going to happen in the near future. Once again, I, uh, I'm not positive about my time, so somebody can let me know. 25? You've got 11, 20, 25 minutes. Oh, okay. We're going okay then. If the Fed does not have the gold reserves that it purportedly has, how would this affect our ability to return to gold? Well, if we don't have any gold, it would affect it a lot. It wouldn't prevent it. Uh, you just, uh, but it would be better to have a transition. I'll tell you what. That, I mean, a lot of us have already gone on our old gold standard. If you're an investor in gold and if you've been buying for years, your reserves are in gold. So fortunately, one of the best things that happened to us and for us in the, in the gold issue was the legalization of owning gold. When I first started buying gold, we played these games where we had to buy a numismatic coin from Mexico that was backdated to 1947. But now it's legal to own, own gold. So uh, if, if we have more time to have this transition, to have more people investing in buying gold uh, and just legalize it, the gold would be there. Uh, and, the, and the dollar, uh, you know, hopefully would ho uh, hang together and people can, we could work out a transition. But if tomorrow we have a total dollar collapse and we want to start a gold standard and say, look, what we're going to do at the Fed now is we're putting no money and we're going to have a reserve of $5,000 or $2,000 and, and we're going to live up to that reserve. But if, if they say we don't have the gold, why should they be believed? You know, when we went back on the gold standard after the Civil War, uh, you know, it was a non-event. It was a three-year period. It gradually went back it was, uh, to $20 an ounce. Uh, but at the end, people trusted the government. We didn't have a welfare state. We weren't the policemen of the world. So even today, going back to the gold standard is not easy. You have to have a believable government. You have to believe them. They're not going to rob debt. They're not going to be involved in constant war, and you're not going to have a Fed that will abuse the system. You really can't have a fractional reserve standard. And that is why, uh, you know, in the short run, I'm fairly pessimistic that uh, one of the best things we can do in order to be prepared for this is more and more people be involved and protect themselves one way or the other, of course. Financially, it's very important, but like I said earlier, we should also invest some time and money into promoting the right values and the right economic policies. Okay, where are we? I can't get that. You have repeatedly said that the Federal Reserve system, one a week. well, it's not doing real well. <laughs> I can't read the entire yeah, I question. Hold it there. Said that the Federal Reserve System has uh, led too much more. 
I can't read the entire the questions, question. I think the questions have to be shorter to fit on uh, the page oh, that I'm reading. Okay. More volatile economic and financial conditions. However, data demonstrates that real economic growth has been less volatile. Uh, bank failures would be worse. If we uh, hadn't bailed out, if we hadn't bailed out, he's making an argument. He's making an argument that, that the Fed actually stabilizes things. No, okay. things predictable. Yeah, th this this is the argument that's made. Uh, did not the bailout and the fraction, you know, the Fed going in and rescuing all these bad loans? You know, I think it did have a stabilizing effect. But once again, uh, only because it it uh, restored a little bit of the bubble. It didn't it didn't liquidate the debt. All, all it did was it stabilized to the point where the people who didn't deserve to be bailed out got bailed out. Uh, that is uh, the Fannie Mae's and the Freddie Mac's and the people holding securities. The, the, the Fed bought $2 trillion of this. So if it's stabilized, is it fair? And will it last? I, I think it's very unfair, and I don't believe it's going to last because it is, it is done by uh, the creation of, of new money. But on the short run, just like coming out of a recession, you say, well, don't, didn't you want to paper over and spend more money and print more money to get out of those recessions? Well, not if you want long-term prosperity and if you, it, or if you want to be fair. But it, it is. It's sort of like taking a drug, though. Uh, the drug has worked to a degree, but it's going to harm. I, I mean, the, you, you might argue this case that there's been stabilization, but, but, but for whom? How about the people who are losing their houses? You know, this whole welfare system was based on the fact, oh, we can give everybody a house. They don't have to have a down payment, and they can borrow against it, and the price will go up forever. They're the first ones to lose the job and lose their house. So they're not very stable. Unemployment is a lot more than 9.7%. It's really over 20% uh, real unemployment rate. So it's very un unsound, and I think that instability for the middle class has been going down for 10 years. So the, the fact that the bankers stabilize and now are cash flush and making money because they get money for free and then they buy a treasury bill for a percent or two higher uh, and, and they make money on this and nobody gets to borrow the money, I would say that kind of stability is nothing more than if the cancer patient comes in and they're hurting, you say, ah, we don't want to give you a serious operation. What we're going to do is dope you up with morphine and you're going to feel better. Well, I think that feeling better is limited. At today's prices, is it difficult for people to have a position in the future? That's a question about silver. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Would silver be a better investment or a better? Okay. I, I will talk a little bit about silver and uh, um, position in gold. I, when I think of a position in gold, I think of ownership of gold, uh, unless you're very good at trading and options and futures and all that. That's uh, for somebody else. And I like people to uh, hold their gold as an insurance policy, not so much as an investment. I think, I think silver, you know, I, I guess it's been maybe 10 or 15 years or even longer, the statistics were there. There's a shortage of silver. We're using more silver than we produce. And uh, there's too many stockpiles that are coming out of the government vaults. And, and that's why the market is flooding. And, and, but we're soon going to get to that point where silver is going to explode. And I, I keep thinking, well, I sort of believe that. But it never seems to happen. But I think right now we seem to be getting very close to that with, uh, with silver at $20 an ounce. It's so much different. The atmosphere today is so much different than it was when uh, a few people tried to corner the market in the 1970s and, and uh, it just blew off like crazy and went up. It, it, you know, the $800 gold was really artificial at the time and you know, it settled down rather quickly. But $20 silver today, the way that looks to me, it's very, very solid. And uh, I, I, I think if I had to, I like them both uh, because I can't figure out which one is better than the other. But right now, I would lean to say if I had to predict which, which a metal will do better in the next two or three years, my guess is that silver would probably do somewhat better. Uh, but uh, silver silver's a good option because some people might feel better about buying silver and can afford to buy silver where it's tough coming up, you know, with twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for one ounce. Of gold. Last question. What, what about going back to uh, President Lincoln's greenback so we won't have to pay interest uh, uh, to the Fed? I, I wouldn't like that at all. 
I would like not paying interest to the Fed. <laughs> we don't want to do that. But I don't want to go back to greenbacks because that's not constitutional. They, that was not backed by anything. They just printed the money. And they, and they didn't pay interest, of course. But, you know, most of this is what some people don't understand. And I had the last person would be me to defend the Fed. But we pay a lot of interest to the Fed. And they run their affairs and they're off budget and they do all the things that I don't like they're doing. But they have money left over and it is returned uh, to the to the treasury. But it's the fact that they can monetize debt, which is the real evil. But just printing money is in, in the greenbacks. That's not constitutional. All we're allowed to do is make gold and silver legal tender and regulate that value of that coin, whether it's one ounce or two ounces or whatever it is. But only in silver and gold should be legal tender, not uh, not greenbacks. So it looks like uh, it looks like uh, that's is our time is about up, and I want to thank everybody once again, and uh, I hope that we can do this again someday. Thank you. Okay, that was Dr. Ron Paul talking about silver and gold here on the uh, Kitco Metals E Conference. Um, I have a link here. Anybody that's not signed up presently wants to check out the rest of the conference, you can go right there and sign up, and you can go there, win prizes, get all kinds of stuff, so that's at uh, econf.kitco.com. Thanks, Kate, and uh, we'll uh, see what else is going on here at the conference. We're going to stop this recording, and uh, we'll get this recording posted up on...